Welcome to today's discussion on the world of business. In the world of project management, which this channel is well known for, there remains a topic which has got to be explored a lot more than it is being explored today by trainers and coaches in this world of project management. Outside of this, it's been explained and explored beyond, way beyond what we do in project management. But for those of you who are in C-level positions, VP-level positions, director positions, It is important that we talk about the world of business with a keen focus on strategy. And the question is always, well, what is strategy? I love the way strategy is broken down by various scholars like Michael Porter. If you haven't listened to Michael Porter, please search for Michael Porter on YouTube and listen to his take on strategy. But when you talk about strategy, you've got to see it as a multifaceted concept that can be understood and applied from various perspectives. Strategy is not just about one thing. It's about many things. It's like an umbrella. Let's explore what strategy means from the business perspective. From a business perspective, strategy refers to a comprehensive plan of action designed to achieve specific goals or objectives. If you want strategy to be successful, you've got to have solid goals. I call them SMART goals. You need to have specific goals or objectives that are measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. And strategy is just the plan for the future state that you envisage as a result of achieving those goals and objectives. No goals, what are you strategizing? You get what I'm saying? Without the goals, there's no cause for a strategy. So strategy needs the goals and objectives, and it involves analyzing the competitive landscape, understanding the marketplace, the market dynamics, and making deliberate choices about how to spend your resources, how to allocate those resources to create and sustain a competitive advantage. When we talk about business strategy, it encompasses decisions about product development, market positioning, pricing, distribution channels, and other aspects that drive long-term success and profitability. Now, from a leadership perspective, we could say strategy involves setting a clear direction, the map of the true north for the organization, guiding its execution towards achieving its vision and mission. Leaders develop strategies to align the efforts of their people, their resources, towards that common goal. An effective leadership strategy encompasses clear communication, great decision-making, great resource management, fostering a culture of innovation and agility. Agility being the ability to change, to adapt, to navigate challenges and seize opportunities. Now, when we talk about a marketing perspective to strategy, it involves developing plans and tactics to promote products or services to attract customers and achieve competitive advantage in the marketplace. This will obviously include market research, segmentation, targeting, positioning, heavy branding, pricing, and promotion strategies that are aimed at influencing the consumer behavior and driving sales. And organizations like Nike, they understand this, which is why they spend a lot of money in their marketing campaigns. Marketing strategy focuses on creating value for customers, building brand loyalty, and sustaining market leadership. It's not the one who creates the best products, my friends. It's the one who is able to to effectively market that product and make the brand name a household name. There's nothing wrong in Reebok. But what distinguishes Reebok from Nike? Why does Nike have such insane market pull? It's the work of great, intentional, expensive marketing. Now... If you're not in any of these businesses trying to make a whole boatload of money and you are in a non-profit, from a non-profit perspective, strategy revolves around advancing the organization's mission and maximizing its social impact 
within resource constraints. Nonprofit strategy involves identifying social needs that are of highest value, assessing community assets and stakeholders, and developing programs, services, and advocacy initiatives to address those needs effectively. And it includes fundraising, volunteer management, partnerships, advocacy strategies aimed at mobilizing those resources and creating sustainable change. And the key goal is usually to improve the well-being of individuals and communities. Now, going to the next level or the next aspect, we can talk about military strategy. What is strategy from a military perspective? For those, my friends, in the world of the military, I've got friends who've served in various militaries. Well, strategy refers to the art and science of planning and conducting campaigns or operations to achieve victory over an adversary. It involves assessing the enemy's strengths and weaknesses, identifying strategic objectives, and deploying forces and resources in a coordinated manner to achieve desired outcomes while minimizing risks, of course, minimizing risks to the resources involved, and encompassing these tactics, logistics, and intelligence to achieve strategic objectives. Also, being a diplomat, diplomacy, applying all of these things in a bid to maintain national security. So I just covered with you, my friends, five perspectives to strategy, business, leadership, military, marketing, nonprofit, for example, and we could go on and on into many more. But I want to hone in on a few of these areas so that I can give my friends who are in certain industries some extra understanding of strategy. I see strategy as being tiered in different levels, you see. In, in the world of strategic management, you can look at strategy at the corporate level. That is huge. That is gargantuan strategy. That is big. That's the big picture strategy. Okay? So at the corporate level, strategy focuses on the overall scope and direction of the entire organization. This is where you need a big picture thinker. And it involves hard decisions relating to the allocation of resources across different business units or divisions. It also involves portfolio management, which is a topic for another day, looking at the entire organizational portfolio, understanding the strengths and the weaknesses, understanding where it hurts the most in the community, and allocating the right resources, identifying new growth opportunities. Corporate level strategies often address questions such as what industries or markets should the organization operate in? Should the organization diversify its portfolio? Or should it focus on core competencies? You see, when the great Jack Welch came in as CEO to GE, what did he do? He took over 200 plus businesses and he whittled them down to are you number one or number two? And if you're not number one or number two, you're going to be divested, you're going to be sold. And that was a hard decision he made, but it made GE what it is today. And these are the tough decisions leaders need to make, right? How should resources be distributed among different business units? Examples of corporate level strategies could include mergers and acquisitions, divestiture such as what GE did with a lot of its business units, strategic alliances and expansion into new markets or product lines. Now, that was at the corporate level. We also need strategy at the business level, at the business unit level. Business unit level strategy focuses on how individual business units or divisions within the organization compete within their respective markets. It involves decisions related to market positioning, competitive advantage, resource allocation at the business unit level, and some of the strategies we could employ will include things like what is our main competitive advantage in the market? 
how do we distinguish our products or services from competitors? See, so take, take Microsoft as big as it is and look under the hood of the different products in Microsoft. Microsoft have, have got a boatload of products. Once upon a time, there was the 360 Connect, right? What do they do with 360 Connect? Well, they downplayed it after a while. Why? It's part of strategy. You look at all the tools we use daily, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, understanding which products bring in the biggest bang for the buck and which could potentially bring in more. So, you know, I just talked about the Xbox, but there are also different types and some have been shelved and others have been pursued, right? And then we talk about Azure DevOps. We talk about Microsoft Teams, which is, you know, it's like a money spinner. So it's, it's like knowing at these different business units where to push into the market, how to differentiate products, knowing their strengths and weaknesses. And they knew. And honestly, Nintendo capitalized on some of the weaknesses in, in the Kinect. And they just did the same thing in a different way. This is all the mindset of strategy, my friends. Examples of business unit level strategies could include product differentiation, as I just mentioned, cost leadership, niche marketing, targeting, and strategic alliances with suppliers and distributors. The overarching theme is how do I penetrate the marketplace to be at the top of our game? Strategy is about the how. Strategy is not necessarily about the minutia plan. It's a grander plan at all these levels because there's still project plans, there's still program plans, but this is talking about the grand master plan. And based on the grand master plan, like a game of chess, you know where to push those pawns. Finally, at the functional level in a firm, functional level strategy focuses on specific activities, could be specific operations within functional areas, like marketing, finance operations, human resources, HR, and it involves decisions related to how each function contributes to the overall objectives of the organization. So everyone needs to be thinking strategy at every level. Functional level, the strategies could be how do we optimize our production to reduce cost? What marketing tactics could we use to reach our target audience? How, you see what I'm saying, the how is really what we're after. How can we attract and retain top talent to support our strategic objectives? Examples of functional level strategies could include cost-cutting initiatives, quality improvement, talent development strategies, and technology adoption plans. So when all is said and done, we got to plan strategically. And strategic planning is the process of formulating, just like a scientist in a lab, it's formulating and implementing strategies at each of these levels that I have covered in my breakdown of corporate, business, and functional. But it's formulating and implementing strategies at each of these levels to achieve organizational goals. I think the reason why strategy is very nebulous to some is all they see is where they are. They do not see beyond where they are. So if, if they are at the, the top level, they may not realize that strategy needs to permeate down. There needs to be a continuation of strategy at the higher levels, permeating from corporate down to business, down to functional. So we need to help our people develop a sense of strategy. Okay? Strategy involves assessing the internal and external environment, always looking at the external environment. When you're planning strategically, you've got to set those priorities. You've got to define action plans, monitoring progress towards strategic objectives. Strategic planning typically involves some analysis of the environment, the wider environment, right? You want to identify any opportunities and threats in the marketplace, internal analysis to assess strengths and weaknesses, goal setting and strategy formulation, strategy implementation and resource allocation, and monitoring 
evaluation and adjustment of strategies based on feedback. So there's an ebb and a flow to strategic planning. It's not just a one and done. You got to look at the wider environment. You got to look internally. You got to set goals, very important. Then you got to implement that strategy. You got to monitor it. You got to tweak it. And strategy is not like a project that's a one and done. Strategy is the lifeblood of an organization. Strategy is what fuels an organization's forward march. One of the concepts that I want to talk about before we leave today is from Michael Porter, who I mentioned in the very beginning. Porter's Five Forces is a framework developed by Michael Porter to analyze the competitive environment of an industry. And it helps in understanding the factors that shape competition within an industry, which can then inform strategic decisions. So let's explore how it applies to leadership and how it applies to organizations of a non-profit nature, which is always a tough nut to crack when it comes to Porter's forces and strategy in general. So let's hone into Michael Porter's five forces. But what exactly are the five forces to begin with? Imagine you're a business owner and you're trying to figure out how well your company will do in the long run. These forces coined as Porter's Five Forces by Michael Porter is, is a framework that helps you analyze the competition in your industry. You've got to look at five key factors. By looking at these five key factors, you can understand how much power you have to set prices, make profits, and grow. Here's the breakdown at a high level. Number one is threat of new entrants. How easy is it for businesses to enter your industry and compete with you? I mean, they just come out from, come from off the street and boom, they're competing with you. How easy is it for that to happen? Now, there's some industries, you know, that's not going to be the case because it takes decades, years to even begin to establish credibility in that industry, right? Like someone who imagines getting into the automobile industry, it's not an overnight thing. But some industries are easier. You know, food industries is a lot easier. You can immediately make an impact. You can make a preemptive strike if you have the resources and the great ideas. So that's the first one, the threat of new entrants. Number two is bargaining power of suppliers. How much control do your suppliers have over you? If they have few alternatives and you rely heavily on them, well, they can charge you more or offer lower quality products. Do your suppliers have the upper hand? It's something to think about. Number three, bargaining power of buyers. How much control do your customers have over you? If they have many choices and they can easily switch to competitors, they can drive down prices, can't they? Number four, threat of substitutes. Let's say they don't get you. Are there other products or services that can replace what you offer? If so, this can put a limit on how much you can charge and how profitable you can be. I won't go into brand names, but you know, there are many ready substitutes for certain brands. They're equally appealing to buyers. Final one is competitive rivalry. How intense is the competition between existing businesses in your industry? If there's a lot of competitors and they're all offering similar products, it's going to be harder to stand out and make money, isn't it? So those five things, threat of new entrants, bargaining power of suppliers, bargaining power of buyers, threat of substitutes, and competitive rivalry. These forces, by analyzing them, you can get a good idea of how attractive your industry is. If the forces are strong, it might be a tough market to be in. But if you can find a way to weaken these forces strategically, and I know it may sound malicious, but honestly, it's the art of war. It's the art of business. For example, if you, if you can build strong brand loyalty with your customers, reducing their bargaining power, or develop a unique product with few substitutes, you'll be in a stronger position. All right? I have so much more to share with you, and I want to encourage you to hit like, subscribe if you've enjoyed this. And in the next episode, I'm going to be breaking down the world of strategy for companies that are in the world of nonprofit advocacy, safeguarding, and things like that. You don't want to miss it. I'll see you in the next episode.